endless plains. That's what Serengeti means in the Maasai language. 30,000 square kilometers of African savanna shared between Tanzania and Kenya. Wildlife filmmaker Reinhard Radke spent two years in this wilderness in the hunt for spectacular images. It's the first German cinema film about the Serengeti since Bernhard Chimek's work 50 years ago. The most recent technology is being used. Footage with up to 2,000 frames per second opens up new worlds. Shooting the film in the Serengeti was a difficult task, full of surprises and adventures. The day starts early in the savanna. You need to use the first light, as many animals only hunt in the cool morning hours. Today, the filmmaker wants footage of a pride of lions. He's following them in the hope of capturing a hunt. Reinhard Radke is a biologist and has been coming regularly to the Serengeti for 30 years. First he came on field trips, then for television and now a film. I still enjoy driving out here into the East African savanna. You can experience unbelievable things that you can't find in any script. The lions don't feel like hunting. Bad luck for the filmmaker. To get better footage, a 4x4 has been converted into a camera platform. The roof's been strengthened and there's a filming balcony. Every camera angle should be feasible. The vehicle has not yet been tried out in the field. With such a large number of wildebeest, the predators cannot be far away. The difficulty is finding them. Today, the filmmaker appears to be in luck. He got footage of an extraordinary hunt. Now it's time to think about his own food supply. Despite the vehicle's idiosyncrasies, it proves to be a jack of all trades. There's a compartment for everything. The car has been equipped with everything that may be required for an impromptu overnight stay in the wilderness, in case it's too far to drive back to base camp.
the filmmaker's not alone. He's assisted by a lookout. His job is to spot the film's main characters. You have to know the animal's behaviour patterns very well for this job, and Peter Blackwell does. Well, first part of the day, we get up as early as we can, so it's still dark. Lions usually tend to head for the bushes first thing, as soon as it starts to get warm. And so we need to be out here before sunrise to try and catch them as they move into cover. We listen here, listen for them roaring, maybe they're on a kill, and after that, then we have the help of the topis. The topis are a great indicator for where the lions might be. Often they'll be up on a, tope, on a mound and they can indicate, point, where the lions might be. And so it is. The sun has not yet risen and Blackwell has found the first lions. A little later, the team witness an extraordinary hunt. The lioness knows every hiding place in her territory. But her uppity neighbor isn't allowing her her quarry. Storm clouds gather in the evening. The overnight rains have turned the sandy tracks into deep mud. Even an off-road vehicle can get stuck. But help can be found even in the remotest areas. Next destination, Old Doinyo Lenge. For the Maasai, the 3,000 meter volcano is the seat of a god. The volcano is occasionally active, but for the filmmaker, it is peaceful, providing images of extraordinary beauty. The volcano is part of a mountain massif which shelters the southern Serengeti from the humid monsoon winds off the Indian Ocean. Only a few months later, Lenge demonstrates its powers. Large volumes of ash are blown into the air, which the wind carries for huge distances over the plains. The basis for a unique natural spectacle, 
the world's largest gathering of ungulates. Every year, the huge herds attract over 120,000 tourists to the national park. The money helps fund nature conservation, but the visitors also use large amounts of a valuable resource, water. There are also debates on the disturbance they cause to the animals. They certainly disturb one individual. Reinhard Radke has constant difficulties obtaining images without tourists in the frame. Again, there are signs of a hunt. But because of the tourists, filming has to be abandoned. Again and again. No footage without a tourist. After the fluffed hunt, the filmmaker moves to the River Grometti. Amongst other things, he wants to film crocodiles. A hide by the shore will be his office for the next few days. I don't much like sitting in a hide because you can't go anywhere else should something interesting happen elsewhere. You have to stay in it all day long and wait for something to happen. On the other hand, you sometimes get footage that you otherwise never would because the animals come so close. Good camouflage can be risky. You wouldn't believe how large such an animal is up close. You can't do anything apart from sit tight and keep calm, which is quite difficult. The elephant obviously hasn't noticed the hide. He comes closer, step by step. An extremely tricky situation, which works out all right. Reinforcements from Germany. Wildlife filmmakers Oliver Gutzel and Ivo Nordenberg are bringing really special technology to the wilderness. Using a new high-speed camera, they want to record in extreme slow motion. A baptism of fire for the high-tech camera. Will it work despite the heat and dust? All three are curious to see the first images. The wildebeest are expected to cross the Grometti as part of their migration in the next few days. Every year, there are then spectacular crocodile attacks. That is what the filmmakers want to shoot. Camouflage is everything. The wildebeest are still distant, so at first the bird life along the river is filmed. 
Ivo Nuremberg is setting up his camera. Here we have our brand new HD high-speed video camera, which will hopefully open up new opportunities. Conventional technology allowed us to film 150 frames a second. Using this technology, we can film up to 2,000 frames a second. We are hoping to be able to show sequences of animal movements that were not possible before. The first few recordings are promising, a good start for Ivo Nuremberg. The new arrivals do not stay undiscovered for long. Even though the wildebeest aren't here yet, the Gometi crocodiles are getting into position. The human eye can't see this but the camera reveals astonishing footage. There's the catfish. It really stands out. Now it's in the jaws. It was strange to see how he grabbed it. You could see clearly how he tried to jump away, even in the air. There he is. Oh no, pan over to the right. Ah, still in the frame. The fish is getting away. Oh no, it's being grabbed by somebody else. And now it rises again. We got that footage too. That's a really great sequence. And in the end, the fish even escaped. Wow, that's good. Really perfect, an incredible scene. I can't keep calm. Joy amongst the filmmakers and time for a snack. First the crocs had some food, and now it's our turn. You're happy with the catering? Better than frozen apple juice in Russia. The crocodiles in the Serengeti can reach a ton in weight. They can go without food for up to six months. There's no need for the wildebeest to hurry. The herds are still a few days' walk away from the Grimetti. The filmmakers will have to wait a while. Next morning, the team want to film hippos with their high-speed camera. 
There are signs of hippos everywhere. The animals can be dangerous. If they feel threatened, they attack without hesitation. I'll get the tripod head and then stay on top because of the stragglers, so they don't surprise you. With the hippo trail behind them, the filmmakers wouldn't notice if one approached. There's a few more today. A few could still come before 10 o'clock, so I'll continue my watch. In the water, the hippos feel safe. There's no danger from there for filmmaker Ivo Norenberg. The digital technology needs elaborate preparations. The special camera is not appropriate for everyday use. There could still be a few coming along. Yes, I know. Good luck. I'll take care. Oliver Goetzel keeps watch from the bankside vegetation. From up here, he can see the approaching hippos from afar and warn his colleagues. There is nothing worse than being surprised here. Yes, that one would be good, but we have no light. Hang on. Ivo Nuremberg is hoping for a good backlit image. The most difficult part is catching the right moment. Watch out, this one will come up again in a moat. Let's see what it looks like. He didn't blow, but it was quite fun the way he pushed the water aside. The water falling over his ears, great shot. And how he's blowing. We'll use this image, that's great. I would never have imagined it, it was such a banal movement. It looks great when this wave comes like a storm surge. That was very nice. The same thing again please, then we're doing well. Once more, the early morning was worth it. Finally, the herds arrive on the banks of the Grumetti. The team get into position. At first, the wildebeest are nervous. They can smell the water, but the shore is a terrifying place, full of unknown smells and strange sounds. Perhaps the filmmakers will manage to get the extreme slow motion images for which they've been waiting so long. It should be at ground level or water level. They also want to film the wildebeest in close up with their remote controlled camera. Oliver Goetzel is testing whether the screen and focus are correctly set for the wildebeest. Yes, that's good. The filmmakers are ready. Now the animals can arrive. 
From their hiding place, the two watch what the remote camera is recording. After a while, the first wildebeest appear. The antelopes don't seem to like having their private lives peered into. That looks quite good. I hadn't dared to hope. Yes, if it didn't kick the lens, then it should be okay. Great. It's dirty, but it's okay. Everything's okay. The microphones were stuck on, right? It doesn't look too bad, but the antenna... There it is. Oh, over there. That really caught it. Shall we open it? We were lucky, boys. I think we were lucky. Yes, all okay, just the battery. It looks okay at the moment. Well, that was close. The wildebeest have retreated for the moment. Still no footage with the special camera. Time is passing. Boredom creeps in. Tiredness wins out. An African fish eagle wakes them up. It's quite noisy. Ripped from sleep by a bird. I wish it had been a crocodile. First forces the wildebeest back to the water. Every day, more animals arrive at the Grometti. The long wait is over. The attack lasts just one second, far too fast for a normal camera. The special camera is ideal for such moments. thousand frames a second. Pin sharp to the smallest detail. You can't see him. Well camouflaged. Came straight out of the water. That was an uproar. Goodness. Did you see? He gave that one a punch. It came up just under the head of the wildebeest calf. Sequences of movement that nobody has been able to see before suddenly become clear. A joy even for experienced filmmakers. It's great how the water rises like that in front of him. The next trip takes the team back to the open savanna. Right. 
Back with them, Peter Blackwell. Uh, I'll probably get stuck here. Ivo Nuremberg wants to film cheetahs with his special camera. Oh, it's heavy. Blackwell's off-road vehicle is ideal for this expedition. This car also has a camera balcony. A car doesn't bother the animals. As long as the people stay inside, they can get within meters. But the filmmakers have to wait a long time to capture a hunt. Finally, something seems to be happening. Evo, it's the, it's the male Tommy. You can see the male Tommy. Reinhardt, I think it's the male Tommy. Let's go. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go. I think it's the one laying down, Evo. It's the one sleeping. The filmmakers don't just want to film the sequence in super slow motion, but in normal time too. That's why Radka is also getting into position. Quick, quick, I think they're up and going. Yep, they're moving forward. The cheetahs approach the gazelles unnoticed. Oh, oh, very nice. Eva, they're going, they're going, they're yes. moving. Oh, shit, it, it's not working. They're moving, Ebert, they're moving. Yep, they're off, they're off and running. Ebert, they're moving. They're yeah. moving. Uh, they're running, no they're running. Picture. Yep, Just they're going. Just... They're running, yep, they're running. Uh, shit, the bloody camera is... They're a... running, it's not they're running. Just make picture. Yep. Yeah. Uh, again, they've got it, they've got it, Ebert. We have to wait for, for uh, 20 not, seconds again. every time. Uh, come on. Every time. Yeah, Reinhardt. Um, yeah, no, we missed it again. On, um, what happened? Give, give me uh, Evo, please. Uh, the camera, yeah, fine. You can talk to Evo. Yeah, that was well, we didn't manage, unfortunately. It's not possible. That's the fourth or fifth time. What's the problem? I just had a black image and then I had to restart the camera. That takes 20 seconds. And then it was all already over and the kill had happened. So that means the only solution is to get a new camera? They have to send it to us from Germany as quickly as possible. It could arrive in Kenya in three or four days and then we still have three days left and hopefully we'll get something. Then be nice to the cheetahs, because they'll have to play ball. In the meantime, the cheetahs play together on their own, without the filmmakers. A female cheetah with six young, an unusual sight. Normally a mother will give birth to two or three cubs. Without the special camera, the three used the brake to get other important footage for the film. With the help of a crane, they want to portray the strain a wildebeest is under during its migration. The animals regularly fall down the riverbank when they cross the river. 
Reinhard Radke wants to bring this exhausting route to life with his camera. He needs a good eye to find the right perspective. Yeah, but that's okay. That will be the shot. Mission accomplished. In base camp, there's good news for the team. The replacement camera has finally arrived from Germany. There's the baby. I hope it works. Let's exchange and see if it works. Only the casing is exchanged. The lens and the monitor have to be screwed onto the new kit. Over the next few days, it becomes clear what kind of images the camera can capture when it works. Finally, Nuremberg even gets his long-awaited hunt. Ivo Nuremberg also succeeds in getting a few more impressive shots. Filmmakers have now travelled north to the river Mara to film the highlight of the wildebeest migration. I want to get out. The creatures could arrive any minute. Every year in early June, the rains end in the south and the grass withers. Then the wildebeest have to cross the river to find food in the north, a spectacle that promises dramatic images. Can you give me the catch? Radke has special permission to film from the riverbed. A unique angle. He puts up with the hardships. It's getting quite warm in these long trousers and thick shoes. And the river is rising. The river couldn't be much higher, and I hope it doesn't rise any more. But it was worth wet feet to get this angle, and the crocodiles don't know what to do with the hide anyway. The Mara is the most important watercourse in the region. So far, it hasn't dried out even during the worst drought. 
For hundreds of thousands of creatures, its waters are literally life-giving. And at the same time, it's a deadly barrier. The wildebeest face the biggest challenge of their journey. The filmmakers get ready. In many places, the bank is 15 meters high. Thousands want to cross the river today. In the brown waters are crocodiles waiting for their opportunity. But the masses move on. Hundreds of wildebeest will lose their lives today, eaten by crocodiles, breaking their necks as they fall or trample to death. However, thousands manage to make it to the other side. Now the way to their rich grazing grounds is clear. Africa's biggest migration will always fascinate Reinhard Radke. Moments such as these are still what makes my work in the field with the camera so special. After two years, the filming is finished. The filmmakers had unique experiences. They bring home many images never before filmed in this way. They will never forget the Serengeti, the endless plains.